Hello, hola, mi nombre es Carolyn, my name is Carolyn, y el video de hoy es el primero de una nueva serie de videos que vamos a hacer en inglés. Bueno, después de esta breve introducción, el resto del video estará en inglés. Es que he recibido varias solicitudes de diferentes seguidores para hacer los videos en inglés. Voy a continuar agregando videos a las listas de reproducción o playlists que ya tenemos en este canal que tienen sus explicaciones en español, como por ejemplo el playlist sobre el inglés básico, el playlist de la pronunciación, el playlist dedicado al turismo. Pero en esta nueva serie de videos, todas las explicaciones estarán en inglés. ¿Ok? Today, we're going to talk about indirect questions. Okay, what is an indirect question? First, let me give you an example of a direct question. Where is the bank? Okay, now, an indirect question. Do you know where the bank is? If you say, do you know where is the bank? This is not correct, okay? It doesn't sound good, it doesn't sound natural. Today you will learn how to form indirect questions correctly, why indirect questions are so important in English. You will see many examples and you will test yourself, okay? Let's get going. Okay, to better understand indirect questions, let's look at another example. First, look at this sentence in the affirmative. The embassy is over there. Here is a direct question. Where is the embassy? And here is an indirect question. Do you know where the embassy is? The embassy is over there. Where is the embassy? Do you know where the embassy is? Do you notice anything in particular? Okay, so what exactly is an indirect question? Well, an indirect question is like two questions. One question and then another question. However, the second question is more like an affirmative sentence. This is very different from Spanish. Let's take a look. A direct question usually starts with an auxiliary verb such as do, can, will, would, etc. followed by a noun or pronoun and then the main verb. For example, do you know his name? We have the auxiliary verb do, followed by the pronoun you, followed by the main verb, in this case no, which is always in the base form. A direct question can also start with an interrogative adverb, such as what, why, where, when, who, or how. For example, what is his name? These are both direct questions. Again, an indirect question has two parts. It can be considered two questions in one. One question and then another question. However, the second question has the structure 
of an affirmative sentence. This is very different from Spanish. We saw these two direct questions. Now look at these possible responses in the affirmative. Do you know his name? Yes, I know his name. What is his name? His name is George. As you can see, with the affirmative response, the subject is first and then the verb. Now once again, look at this example of a direct question. Notice the positions of the subject and the verb. They are reversed. Now let's look at this question. It's an indirect question. Can you tell me what his name is? The two parts of this indirect question are can you tell me and what his name is. Look at the difference between the indirect and the direct questions in this example. You can see that the second part of the indirect question has the same structure as the affirmative response. If you say, can you tell me what is his name? This is not correct. Let's see if you can identify the correct indirect question. Do you know when the class starts? Do you know when does the class start? The first one is correct. Do you know when the class starts? Remember, an indirect question has a question part and an affirmative part. Let's look at an affirmative response. The class starts at 8. Let's try again. Can you tell me where is the exit? Can you tell me where the exit is? This one is correct. Let's look at a reply. The exit is to your right. The exit is to your right. Identify the correct indirect questions. Can you tell me where stop this bus? Can you tell me where this bus stops? Can you tell me where does this bus stop? Can you tell me if this bus stops soon? These are the correct questions. Can you tell me where this bus stops? Can you tell me if this bus stops soon? Okay, so why are indirect questions so important in English? Well, as you know, in Spanish, we have tú and we have usted. 
In English, these are both you. We don't differentiate. So we use indirect questions as a way to ask for information in a more respectful and polite manner. Particularly if you are speaking with someone you don't know so well, such as a stranger. For example, imagine you are in the airport and you need an immigration form, okay? You might ask someone, excuse me, where are the immigration forms? Okay, this is a little too direct. Okay, it doesn't sound polite. People will be more inclined to help you. They will be more willing to help you if you say, excuse me, can you tell me where the immigration forms are? Okay, let's take another look at this. Let's look at this example again. Where are the immigration forms? Direct question, less polite. Can you tell me where the immigration forms are? Indirect question, more polite and respectful. Okay, let's look at some more examples and then we'll talk about the exception. Which is correct. Do you know where the keys are? Do you know where are the keys? Do you know where the keys are? Can you tell me what time the plane leaves? Can you tell me what time the plane leave? Can you tell me what time does the plane leave? Can you tell me what time the plane leaves? Do you know what this is? Do you know what is this? Do you know what this is? Did they tell you when is the boss coming? Did they tell you when the boss is coming? Did they tell you when the boss is coming? The exception is when we use which plus a form of to be. In this case, both parts of the indirect question are in the interrogative form. Which is Ava's house? This is a direct question. Do you know which is Ava's house? This is an indirect question. In this case, we simply add the direct question to the first part. Which is Ava's house? Okay, apart from being more polite and less direct, it's important to know how to form indirect questions correctly if you want to be at a higher level of fluency in English. 
This might be very important for your profession. If you have a job where you need to do a lot of negotiations, where you need to provide presentations, where you are evaluated on your ability to speak in English, it's a good idea to know how to form indirect questions correctly. You will be understood if you don't form them correctly, but it will be easier to communicate with you if you do know how to form them correctly. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned a lot. Please write any comments or questions in the comment section and I hope you subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.